I'm Marilyn Priel. There are dozens of beautiful native plants in California, and the California Native Plant Society is doing what they can to preserve them. Stay with us and hear all about it. My guest is Steve Rosenthal, a retired high-tech worker and former president of the California Native Plant Society, the Santa Clara Valley Chapter. Welcome, Steve. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, have you here and talk about these things that I care so very much about. And uh, I hope this will be informative to your audience. Oh, I know it will. Well, first of all, explain what is the California Native Society and how it came about. The California Native Plant Society is a little more than a 50-year-old uh, nonprofit that is headquartered in, uh, in Sacramento. There are a little more than 30 chapters statewide, and each chapter works to protect native plants in that area, to encourage people to plant uh, natives in their gardens, to instruct uh, folks in uh, the ecological uh, importance of native plants and uh, to assist in um, landscaping and uh, in, in home gardens. So one of the things that we do in Santa Clara Valley is that uh, we have a gardening with natives group and they host a about 50 talks a year, uh, and they are held at various libraries throughout the valley uh, in Palo Alto, Los Altos, San Jose, Campbell, all over. And uh, you know, we also have a YouTube channel, and we've had hits from as far away as Russia. And you know, people is planning a move to California, are they? Perhaps, <laughs> or maybe they just find the information about botany intriguing. They love plants. Perhaps. They love plants. Well, now, how uh, how does one how determine what is an? Because there are so many different um, climate zones in California, for instance. How is it determined what is an actual native plant per region? Yeah, that's a really interesting question and it turns out that uh, the definition goes something like this if the plant was uh, here at the time that Europeans came into California we call it native so would that include mustard then the no mustard the, no the, the, mu uh, planted the mustards along? planted planted that they brought that from Europe, mm -hmm. so that's non-native. Okay. But, um, uh, you know, there's, I've got an interesting tree over there. It's called a ginkgo tree. Oh, I love those. And ginkgo was native. Sounds Japanese. 30,000 <laughs> years ago, or maybe 130,000 years ago. But it died off in uh, the, uh, during the la last glaciation, pe glacial period. So mm. it's considered non-native even though it was here First. long ago, mm. but it doesn't exist in the wild today. So it's basically, uh, perhaps they started cataloging uh, these things when the Europeans came. So they're just basing it on what was here at that time. Right. So if somebody, for instance, wanted to because I'm assuming that if you purchase plants that are native to your region, they're going to thrive better than something that, say, shamrocks from Ireland that have to be in the shade and a lot of moisture. So um, I'm assuming that it's, they're easier to grow in your yard. That's absolutely correct. So the local natives, uh, if it's a local native, 
nobody waters it because it's out in the wild, right? So it's a plant that knows how to uh, survive through our climate without any extra help. The other thing that's really important to understand is that uh, natives have built up relationships with wildlife so that bees and birds, they're, they're the preferred food for uh, birds, they're the preferred nectaring sources for hummingbirds, they're the preferred uh, pollen sources for uh, bees, and so much more. Now, if, say, I wanted to start up a yard and um, have all native plants in it, where would I go to find out the list of native plants? It's just, uh, I guess, on the internet now. Ask yeah. for a list of native plants in the Santa Clara Valley. So Is it uh, accessible to everyone? Now? Absolutely. So the, uh, th there are a number of places you could go, but the place that I think is the best is uh, Cal Flora, and it's That's a, a website. it's a website, and so if you go to calflora.org, on the left hand side you'll see a link that says what grows here, and you click that and you put a mark, you move the map around and you put a mark on on the map okay. by your house. So we don't have to join your organization to find out where the native plants are. No. Would, any, uh, would a typical nursery, and you go in, do they know what's a California native plant? Most of them do. Do they? Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, but, you know, you bring up uh, an interesting question. So you don't need to join our organization to find I'm out what's in I'm just playing with you yeah. a little bit. But, but, you know, all of the things that we, almost all of the things that we do are free to and open to mm -hmm. the public. So, uh, you know, to go to Your our lectures. talks at the mm -hmm. lectures, to go on most of our uh, hikes, uh, everything we do is open to the public because education is one of the things that we value the most. So we love to educate uh, the public, we love to educate uh, kids, and so sometimes we'll give talks in schools, and it's all free. Now, um, I'm wondering, at it, it uh, first thought, you would say, well, it's easier than maintaining a lawn and having to mow the lawn, but there has to be a lot of work in uh, keeping these and separating them when they get too thick, and uh, is there considerable maintenance on having a yard that's just full of nothing but native plants? Yeah, you know, um, it depends upon how you like your garden. You know, I like my garden a little wild, uh, but I typically don't spend more than the average homeowner doing maintenance. Okay. Um, the maintenance is different. And there are things that you can do that are important to let uh, reducing the amount of work you have to put into it. And uh, if you look down along uh, by our feet, at some point, you'll see that you know we're sitting on mulch here. And if you have about four inches of mulch, weeds won't go through that four inches. They don't get oh, light, okay. and right. you don't end up having to That's right. weed. Okay. Okay. Well, now let's talk about invasive plants. Now, I'm wondering about poppies because they're one of the most beautiful little flowers there are, and they seem to run wild. So, what is an invasive plant? Ah, okay, so uh, an invasive plant is typically a non-native that is aggressive in the way it grows. Now, these California poppies that you're talking about are our state flower. We don't typically call them invasive because they, they're not invading, they've always lived here. But they can, but they take can be aggressive. But a nice thing about that is that they will form uh, big mounds, they'll block out the light, and typically you don't have a lot of weeds growing through poppies. You know, a, a trick about poppies, keeping them blooming for maybe 
six months out of the year is to cut them back when they look tired and they'll grow fresh foliage and new flowers and you can get them blooming from early spring into mid to late summer. So I just had to put that in there. I'm happy to know that. Now, um, why then if a plant is hardy and it comes in and takes over it, it's considered invasive, why does your group not just allow them, uh, you know, to evolve and take over. Um, why do you not want that? Right. So it turns out that uh, plant, uh, plants react with birds mm -hmm. and uh, bees and other wildlife. And those, that, those wild creatures, the insects, the uh, birds, and you know, to a certain extent, uh, you know, larger animals uh, have favorite foods. And you know, if you came from Italy, you know, you might love your pastas, and you might. But if you came from the Far East, you might not have those affinities. Well, insects do too, uh, and. So it turns out that native plants are more valuable, as a rule, uh, to uh, native insects than something that's imported. Hmm. Okay. okay. The other thing about plants coming from other parts of the world is that we see sometimes when you bring a plant in from another part of the world, you bring a disease in with it. And you know, that happened with uh, sudden oak death. It's happened uh, with, you know, a lot of uh, diseases. And that's because plants that have evolved with particular kinds of uh, predators have built up a resistance. When you get a new disease into an area, you know, we as humans or uh, plants uh, don't have any resistance. So the it's natives like when the Spanish went into Mexico and brought all the diseases to the That's exactly there. what happened. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, now, um, what are some projects that uh, I know your group they have open houses for members and certain times of year they open the, their yards to the public where people can come in and look at all the native plants. But your group, uh, your society also does other projects. And I want you to tell me what your chapter has done in the past couple of years, and you as president initiated it and oversaw it. So tell us about that. All right. Well, I don't get all the credit. I, I've worked for, I, I was president for a number of years. But, uh, you know, so we talked about uh, these Gardening with Native talks. We have a... Uh, Google group, or excuse me, a Yahoo group, that where people can submit questions about natives, and they can upload photos and ask questions about ID or questions about pruning or questions about diseases um, or suggestions for what might grow in a particular area, and that's all free. Um, we have uh, a in, in the spring. Uh, we've got a uh, great event that we uh, hold usually at West Valley College now, which is the Wildflower Show. It's just over for the season. We've got the Going Native Garden Tour, and where you can visit as many as 60 different gardens uh, over a period of a couple of days. And you can look at people's designs and you can ask them questions about how easy it was to do, what, they're, what they learned from the garden, things like that. Um, what about at, uh, big things, like okay. for instance what you're doing out at Alamorant Ah, Okay, so we have a number of sites where we do restoration. One is at Alm Rock Park that I'm involved in and there's, we have three restoration sites there. Uh, one is in a oak woodland, which is 
uh, really shady, but there was a fire there about eight years ago. And when it opened up the canopy, and a lot, a lot of light got down, there were a bunch of thistles and invasive plants that took hold. Well, we've gotten a lot of those uh, invasive plants out, and we continue to work there. We had uh, some work at a place called Inspiration Point, which has beautiful views of uh, the valley, and uh, three kinds of oaks. We've got blue oaks there, we've got uh, coast live oaks, and we've got valley oaks there. So what are you doing in the way of restoring then? What, what kinds of things, activities? Great you... question. So, you know, because of some of these diseases that have come in from other countries, like uh, sudden oak death, we're no longer planting plants, but what we do do is plant seeds. But by doing that, we're, we're not bringing other soils into the park. It means we're a lot safer, okay? There's another restoration that we do. It's called Edgewood, and uh, that's uh, over on the west part of the bay. And it's a really interesting place. They've been working restoration there for 20 years. So, uh, so what do you do? You, you clear out the invasive plants. Yep. And uh, what do you do with them? Just we don't want them, do we? So you dispose of those, I guess. Right. So and, uh, then, then you clear out the invasive. You do what you can to print prevent diseases and then you bring in more native plants and yes. plant them in these locations. Right, so what we'll do is we'll compost uh, the non-natives. So we break down all that plant material. We rock the seeds because they can't, it's you know, a, a big pile, it might be four foot tall. No light gets to those seeds and they rot and they die. The, uh, the compost forms fertilizer and it's all the better for the natives, right? Now this is all volunteer, and um, you have other people who maybe are not members, but who like to volunteer and come up and work in these sites and mm -hmm. help you dig and rake and hoe and, and plant and do Absolutely. that sort of things. Absolutely, mm -hmm. so uh, we've got uh, quite a few school kids who come in. There's a wonderful uh, teacher up in the Fremont School District who uh, refers uh, students to us and they learn about invasives, they learn about uh, how natives grow and then they write papers uh, to demonstrate the knowledge and I think that's just a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And we're happy to work with school groups. We also work with corporate groups and uh, we work with uh, regular visitors to the park who might want to come. We have work days every Monday morning at 9 a.m. And this anyone who wants to work? Can... Anyone who wants to work can come join us. They'll uh, learn about better, more efficient ways of weeding. They'll also learn a lot about the native plants. We call it Weed and Walk. So if someone wants to become a member of your society, or even just to volunteer, to go on your work days and just be outdoors and help out a little bit and work, is there a website that they can contact and get more information? Sure. So the CNPS website is cnps.org. California, California Native, Native Plant, Plant Society, society. cnps.org. Okay. And there, you can join on the website. There's a so lot of. So you join the society, and then you move over it for locally to your local chapter. Then. So. Yes, mm -hmm. but well, as I've said, you don't need to be a member for most things. We'd love you to become a member because you know that's how we fund our activities mm -hmm. in 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 large uh, to large degree. What are the dues? Uh, the Dues are, I think, thirty dollars a year, either thirty or forty dollars a yeah, year. Yeah, I suppose you have some activities for chapter members to kind of entice people to want to be part of that. You know, we do. Um, we have a nursery, 
So one of the advantages to being a member is that you get a discount at the nursery. No, oh, there's your thirty dollars. Yeah, and if and you're more. if you're going to be planting a yard full of natives, you can save a lot of money that way. But uh, you know, another thing is that I lead uh, hikes up uh, trips up to Mount Hamilton for rare plants because that's limited to about fifteen people. That's members only. There are a number of members only events, but most of them are open to the public. Now, if someone wants to just go on a work day and just dig and volunteer and, and, and be a helper, do they contact that? How, who do they contact for that? Okay, so if you'd like to become, uh, if you'd like to work uh, at Alm Rock Park, we'd love you to just show up any Monday morning at 9 a.m. Hmm. Uh, if Where you're, do they show up? Uh, so we meet uh, usually at the end of the road in, in Alm Rock Park by the Youth Science Institute. Oh, right. But if you're a child or if you have a child that wants to volunteer, someone uh, under 18, we need a, a parent's signature on the release form. Everybody will sign a release form. Um, there is a Yahoo group that we use for our Alum Rock restoration and it's uh, groups.yahoo.com uh, slash Alum Rock Park Volunteers and I'll send you a link to that so you, you can put it at the uh, put a link out on okay. the well, now at an earlier time, uh, you took us up to Alum Rock Park, to your favorite place, it's Inspiration Point. And we want to show, we took a little footage then, and we want to run that and show that right now. That would be wonderful. We're at Inspiration Point, and you're really partial to this point, and you want to tell me why. Oh, you bet. So, <laughs> it really... it. it it's really well named. It's inspiring. There's a great view. There's wonderful plants up here. The, the view of all, all this oak woodland, it's a mixed oak woodland with buckeye trees and elderberry trees. Uh, in the spring, there's lots and lots of wildflowers. Uh, we've got a beehive just downhill from here. And the bees are living in an old uh, oak tree that uh, has a hollow in it. And uh, there's all kind. Of, we, we get all kinds of uh, birds flying through. The butterflies that feed on the buckeye trees uh, when they're in bloom, like now, it's really gorgeous. You really like nature, don't you? I really like nature. So you were a high tech worker. You retired and you're pretty much devoting most of your time to taking care of these native plants, I understand. I am. So between uh, restoration, so we've got three sites here. One is uh, here at Inspiration Point. Another one is at a place we call the Fire Meadow because there was a fire and it all got burned out. But, and, and the place was full of thistle, it was very ugly, we've pulled out all that thistle, and it's not totally gone, but it's mo mainly gone now, and we're seeing all kinds of native plants come back. Uh, when you have a fire, you get uh, native plants that are called fire followers, and they, they know in their DNA, they know that once there's a fire, they'll, there, there's gonna be light in this once dark forest, because the, the trees got burned out and they take advantage of that and for a number of years they come up and they produce this really nice uh, floral show. So this is a north facing slope and in a north facing slope you never get really hard light. So you've got this mottled shade especially with the, uh, we have a blue oak here, there's a uh, uh, valley oaks and coast live oaks down slope of us, but on the far side, you can see it's all grassland mm -hmm. because that is south facing and it gets the full onslaught of the sun. And so 
This is a very diverse park. It's got shady areas. It's got full sun areas. It's got plants that like all kinds of different conditions. And it's, it's got birds and bees that like various plants because that's what makes an ecosystem. So uh, it's just a place where I really love to hang my hat. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing all this. Sure. It's my pleasure. It's what makes me want to live. Well, I can understand why you think it's so beautiful and why it makes you so happy to be working and taking care of these places. And thanks so much for inviting us to your beautiful yard and talking with us about the native plants. So, thank you very much.